it is hot as nuts out here. Not at all like the, say, Bavarian Alps, where you might expect to find this thing, the BMW i4 M50. It's all electric and it's smoking. Let's get some nitty gritty things out of the way. The i4 is a grand coupe that follows in the EV footsteps of BMW's i8, i3, and iX. Of all of those, this sexy sedan with the sloping roofline is my favorite body style. The base model version of the i4 is the E-Drive 40, which gets decent horsepower and is a rear-wheel drive configuration. I managed to get my sticky fingers on the M50. Yes, that M means that this particular model is from the M Performance division of BMW. And yes, even though this is an electric vehicle, it still needs to live up to that M. That's what we're gonna find out today. The M50 pushes 536 horsepower around with all four tires and gets up to 275 miles of range. That is less than the E-Drive 40, which manages 300 miles. But am I disappointed that I have less range when I have this under my right foot? Oh. <laughs> That's about, I don't know, zero to 60 in like 3.9 seconds. The answer to that question is no. Power feels quick, zippy, jazzy, immediate. However you want to say it, it's there. I'm not feeling like I need more, even though this isn't a shrinking violet of a car. It weighs in at over 5,000 pounds. So I did have a chance to talk to a BMW rep and he was explaining to me that the engineers really wanted to put their best foot forward here. The engineering, the dynamics, the way that this car drove was the most important thing. No matter that customers were absolutely screaming for it, BMW would rather have taken the time and done it right. Have they succeeded? Yeah, I mean, I would say that this is definitely worth the wait. From the balance of the i4 to the weight distribution to the stability, this car just feels good. I love it when I get into a sports sedan and it actually feels sporty from the get-go. The i4 to me feels taut, it feels clenched, like it's already ready for action. Now I have heard some journalists who are pushing it to eight, nine tenths and who are way better drivers than I am say that they're feeling a little bit of understeer when they're in sport mode or that they are feeling a little bit of torque steer. Honestly, I've pushed this car as hard as I can and I have not felt that. But, you know, I think also most people who are buying this car are not gonna take it to that level. Um, so I don't think they're gonna have any issues in that regard. No, my limits might not be as extreme as someone else's, but on regular, legal, road and highway driving, even in a spirited manner, I am not feeling the I-4 lacking. It also comes with an adaptive suspension that has an air setup in the rear, helping out with that composed and comfortable ride. If I had one complaint, it would be about the steering. There's an artificial feel and really no feedback here. But when you're in sport mode, the weight of it is great and there's no dead spot on center. So like I said, um, I'm just nitpicking. Let's talk regenerative braking for a second, shall we? The i4 gets four different settings to customize your braking regen needs, including shutting the system off completely for a more natural feel. I say more natural because, well, you're not gonna get 100% natural. This is brake by wire, so take that into account. There is a setting on the regen braking system that I really like, it's called adaptive. And what that does is it works with the navigation system and it will anticipate elevation change, it will anticipate a turn that you have coming up and already get into braking mode for you, which, I think it's kind of pretty cool. Of course, you can control it yourself. I've used it. Um, I think the adaptive is a really cool setup and a cool feature. Try them all out. Driving a sport coupe with one pedal is a totally different experience, especially if you're mashing the throttle and then doing some hard braking. But once you get used to it, there's a synchronistic feel that you start to get with the car, and I really dig it. It's like left foot braking while rally driving, and to me, that's just the best kind of driving there is. 
So one small complaint about that, you can switch from whatever setting you're in into adaptive just by moving the shifter over to B, but you cannot switch it all the way off or change the setting of it unless you go pretty deeply into the UX system. You know, the more that these cars are tech-based, like the more we are gonna have layers in the infotainment system, um, but it would be great if there was like a paddle here or some kind of, I don't know, maybe physical button or something that was just a little bit easier to get to. The i4 gets an 83.9 kilowatt hour battery that is DC fast charging capable up to 200 kilowatts. At that capacity, you're looking at a 10% to 80% charge in 31 minutes. And like Mercedes-Benz and Cadillac, BMW is throwing in free charging sessions with EVgo. So just one word about the batteries that BMW is using for the i4. They are exclusive for this vehicle and BMW has said that they're going out of their way to source cobalt especially in conflict-free zones. So what that means is hopefully countries that have really strict child labor laws um, and a little bit more environmentally conscious, which I always think is a good thing. Let's talk about the interior for a second. The i4's cockpit is driver focused and friendly, the way a Grand Coupe should be. There's a massive curved display that orients toward the driver and incorporates both driver's information and entertainment, climate controls, and smartphone connectivity. I like how the gauge cluster, the infotainment screen, and the head-up display all work together. They're super customizable, and you can put information either individually on each of these screens or you can have everything all in the same place all at once. Drivers like it when they can have stuff where they want it. The seats are a gorgeous Vernasca leather. This color happens to be called Takora Red and it is beautiful. The seats are highly adjustable and fit like a glove without being super restrictive. Goldilocks says just right, thanks. Space is pretty decent back here, especially when you're talking about behind my seating position. Now when I move over, not sure why the transmission tube is here, but okay. When I'm here behind Ryan the intern, say hi Ryan. Hi Ryan. Room does get a little bit more scarce. He's a little bit further back. And I can say the same for the roof line too, even though, you know what, I like the sloping roof line, but hey, I'm never sitting back here. That's where the intern goes. Some great standard features in the i4 include a power tailgate, keyless entry, moonroof, rain sensing wipers, a Lynn favorite, dual climate control, intern Ryan thanks you BMW, and adaptive cruise control. Additional driver assists include blind spot detection, lane departure warnings, rear cross traffic alerts, and a fatigue and focus alert. The M50 adds 19-inch wheels, M Sport brakes with blue calipers, so everyone knows you're Ming it. The badging does that too. But you also get that adaptive M suspension and variable sport steering. You can load up on more options should you choose, including heated steering wheel, lumbar support, heated seats, and get this, the iconic sounds electric feature. What's that? I'm glad you asked. If you are a fan of the movies at all, then you probably know the name Hans Zimmer. He composed music for Pirates of the Caribbean and Gladiator, so yeah, like, we know him. Well, BMW commissioned Mr. Zimmer to make all of the sounds in the i4, and so some of them are just absolutely super cool and otherworldly, especially when you get into sport boost mode. I mean, listen, whether you like it or not, or think it's just too weird or not, what I love is the fact that BMW has made something that's really bespoke. This is a premium brand, and I love the fact that they're adding little touches that make it feel like it. Coming outside, the i4 looks every inch a BMW, down to the kidneys up front. Instead of cooling through those nostrils, though, that's where BMW stashes the radar sensors in this EV. I think here they're nicely proportioned. Yeah, I can't say that about other BMWs. The M50 gets the bulged hood and signature BMW headlights. You know exactly what it is when you see it. You like? Some other competitors to look at if you're in the market for a luxury electric sports sedan are the Tesla Model 3, the Kia EV6 GT, and the Polestar 2 with the performance pack. 
pricing for the i4 eDrive 40 starts at $55,400. The M50 i4 gets a higher base price of $65,900. Both of these prices do not include the federal tax credit of $7,500 that you could be eligible for. The M50 i tested that comes with special paint, the parking assistance, premium and high performance packages has a retail price of $76,670 and that does include the 995 destination charge. You know what? That seems kind of like a bargain. Woo wee, BMW, I am still sweating and not just because of the Southern California summer. The i4 M50 lives up to the M badge, thanks in part to some stellar driving dynamics, some really engaging tech, and classic BMW looks. If you want one, go snag it. It's already in dealerships.